Welcome to Jersey's Flying and the Worldwide Developers Conference from Apple is just started and Apple has brought so many new hardware and an obviously new Mac OS 14 Sonoma. So let's talk what this means for unsupported Macs. So the WWDC just started in Cupertino with Apple showing so many new hardware, software, the new Apple Vision Pro glasses and so on. But there are so many channels and YouTubers that just will present you every detail of the new hard and software. I'm not gonna do that. Let's talk in this video, what does that mean to unsupported Macs like my old MacBooks Pro, like the Mac Pros, like old iMacs and so on. And which Macs are the new unsupported Macs and what are the chances that you can run Mac OS 14 Sonoma on these unsupported hardware. One thing Apple already showed on its website is what is officially supported. And so basically, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro starting 2018 are still officially supported with Sonoma. The iMac starts 2019 with one exception that is the iMac Pro from 2017. But all older iMacs, older than 2019, will not receive macOS 14. And obviously all the new hardware like the Mac Studio and the new Mac Pro obviously and the Mac Pro 2019, the Intel version. That is one more thing that Apple showed and a lot of you guys were a little bit suspicious. Can they make it like put an Apple Silicon into a Mac Pro and have it have expansion ports? And yes, they can. It is the M2 Ultra that is a fusion of two M2 chips and they do have PCI Express expansion ports. But nothing else, you cannot upgrade the, the memory, the RAM or like cores or whatever, but you can put some GPUs or some other expansion cards in it. And that is more or less the main difference to the Mac Studio. Because the Mac Studio also get an upgrade with M2 and so you basically can just configure Mac Pro and Mac Studio the same Apple Silicon but you just cannot expand the Mac Studio with any additional cards. Oh and I forgot the Mac Mini is also 2018 and newer officially supported from Mac OS Sonoma and nothing else. So all you guys with a 2017 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini and a 2018 or older iMac won't receive the new Mac OS. And now comes the big question, can Open Core enable Sonoma on these unsupported Macs? First things first, it's very too early to have a definite answer to that because um, the beta is just being released and the developers can now check and if it works, what are the problems, what changed behind the curtain, so can they transfer it. With macOS Ventura already last year, they had a problem with very old Macs 2012 and older that Ventura required AVX2. I made some videos about that and those chips, the pre-Haswell generation, didn't have AVX2, they just had AVX. But there was a loophole because the core of Ventura for Apple Silicon still used an older version that didn't require AVX2 so the developers could just take this core and use it for Intel based Macs to just not have the requirement of AVX2. There are some signs that this won't work with Sonoma anymore because Apple constantly updates its software and its cores so there is a very good chance but as I said, it's quite early to pinpoint any uh, solutions or just be able to say if it will run. But there are some signs that 
So Noma at least requires AVX2 and therefore an Intel Haswell chip and therefore like 2012 and younger. By the way, there are so many comments and I'd like to uh, talk about this a little bit where I get comments from people installing Ventura on a 2009 Mac model, whatever, iMac or something like that. I don't recommend that. I really recommend the first models for running Ventura, like my models here, are 2012 and 2013. So, but the 2012 here is still a pre-hassle, it works. I will test if I can install a Sonoma beta or when it was uh, released in fall, if I can install Sonoma here. But this one is a 2013 uh, MacBook Air with a hassle chip. So I will keep you updated. This 2008, 9, 10, that is like 13, 14 year old hardware with the latest Mac OS, I don't recommend and it really is slow and is not meant to run that software. Just a second question. So what is the most recommended Mac OS version for the very old Macs? And that is quite simple. So up until Mac OS Catalina, there was no Apple Silicon Core integrated. So you had High Sierra, that is the latest that doesn't require a metal capable graphic card. So for instance, the Mac Pro cheese grater with a non-updated graphics card, High Sierra is the latest. Then there was Mojave, that was the first one which required a metal capable graphics card, officially supported by the Mac Pro 2012 if you upgraded the GPU. Then there was Catalina. And I recommend that you use Mojave or Catalina for Macs that are quite old because it's quite fast. I had some comments and there was a quite old Mac that nearly needs two minutes to boot Ventura. I don't know, that doesn't feel right and I don't think that you want to have such a Mac feeling so old and slow. So go with Mojave or Catalina and that is still quite fast for old Macs and with open core there are there's a good chance that they have integrated some metal capable graphic drivers and that you can use it quite quick and responsive. Then there was Big Sur, the first one with Apple Silicon support for the Apple M1. And then there was Monterey and then Ventura. And that is the third Mac OS that I recommend. First, as I said, High Sierra, no metal support required. Then Catalina, that is quite fast because it doesn't have any Apple Silicon Core and then Monterey. Monterey in its latest version runs rock solid, for instance on my Mac Pro 2012 and for the Mac Pro 2013 it's obviously officially supported. So Monterey is in my opinion still the way to go for Mac Pros. Ventura though runs fine on my MacBooks here but there are still some issues um, with Ventura on the Mac Pros and for instance here on my MacBook Air still the weather app has some problems, is slow and sometimes crashes with Ventura even though it's a Haswell chip but the old graphic drivers that the developers reintegrated into macOS, into the loader, they are not meant for this macOS so there always are some minor problems. One very big warning at this point. I read some comments and it's getting more and more comments that users with a Mac Pro 2008 to 12 do get into a boot loop with installing OpenCore Legacy Petra 0.66. That is the version before 067 was released three days ago already, but 067, and you can just scroll through the uh, change log, that is more or less like a backend update. There is nothing you will really see. There are some minor bug fixes and there is a little bit changed uh, with the protocols, how they do the background um, 
protocols and logs. I already showed that in my video that they integrated a logging system so they can gather some very anonymous information about your Mac model and your system you're running so they can tailor Open Core Legacy Patch a little bit better to the problems that they get via the logging system. And so they did some updates to the logging system. And other than that, there are no new features, there are no big bugs that has been solved. But with 066, some Mac Pro users get into a boot loop after installing it and after doing the root patch. I don't know and actually I cannot test it on my Mac Pro because it's not here yet. I just moved over here into the US and my Mac Pro is still on the way. But as they didn't change a lot behind the or only in the back end with the 067, I strongly recommend all Mac Pro users first, if your system is running, never change a running system, right? So there's no need to. Second, stay with 065 on your Mac Pro until we can figure out what happening with those boot loops. And 065 is fine for the latest macOS Monterey and also for the latest macOS Ventura, even though, I said it again, I don't recommend it yet. You can play around if it's just sitting somewhere in the corner and you wanna play with your Mac Pro and testing it, fine. Give me feedback in the comments if you have uh, found out something or um, like to contribute to the development, but if you use it as a productive Mac Pro, stay at my opinion, stay with Monterey and stay with 0.6.5. Being that said, what can you do when you're in a boot loop? And there are so many questions in my comments. At first, no panic, okay? At first, before you enter some boot loop, hopefully you have a USB drive with an install macOS uh, file and open core legacy patcher that you can boot from. If you have that, plug it in, keep all door option key pressed and select the USB EFI boot and then start from there and see if it works. If you just update it open core and it doesn't boot. So try booting from the USB drive. If that doesn't work and it's maybe because of the root patch, then try to keep shift pressed and then select your macOS in the open core boot selector and you should enter the safe mode. And you can see that when the login screen comes in the top right corner, there's a red writing safe mode. Maybe this helps and if, then undo the root patch, revert the root patch. Open the open core legacy patch or say root patch and then it says the root patch is installed and you click revert and it tries to revert the root patch and then it should boot again. What you can always try to do is before you revert the root patch, try to reset the NVRAM, okay? So here in my video, there are all shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts for Mac models, Apple Silicon or Intel that you can use, that you can just go through and there is a help how you can get these modes activated. So there are some questions already. Can I go back from 13.4 to 13.2 or maybe back from Ventura to Monterey? No, you cannot. So basically you have to install it from scratch. And so make sure you always have a backup. Best backup is on an external drive. And um, then if you want to test a new version, Wait a little bit, there are not that many new features that you just have to go on that on an unsupported Mac on day one. Wait until you have a video from, uh, from my channel or from another channel that says, okay, it's safe for unsupported Macs, or maybe these and these are the problems and just slow the horses and wait a little until you can be sure that it works. If you haven't yet, I would recommend you subscribe my channel, click the bell for notifications so you'll be notified when there is a new video out there. And we're all looking forward for Sonoma, macOS 14, it should be released somewhere in fall, and for the new Mac hardware. 
next video if I can uh, make it until I fly back to Germany in a few days. But the next video I will check out what used Macs are now a very good bargain because Apple just released the M2 Mac Pro Mac Studio. So what about the M1 Mac Studio for instance or the 2019 Intel Mac Pro? What are the price ranges? Should you buy something like this maybe for half the price than a new one? Is it still worth it? Intel versus Apple Silicon. What are the advantages and the disadvantages but not which new model you should buy because there are a lot of YouTube guys that will do some benchmarking and present everything uh, in detail. I will talk about which used Macs are very good bargain. For instance, 2018 MacBook Pros, for instance, they are officially supported by Sonoma. And let's talk about all this in the next upcoming video. As I said, thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.